everyone. Uh, this is a great day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So we're going to uh, wait a few minutes before we get started. We're going to wait a few minutes, and um, then we will get started. Uh, maybe two minutes before we get started. And uh, this is exciting, learning how love uh, what love does it, it, it's exciting because we spend a lot of time learning how to love and what love is but it's really exciting to get the benefit of what we're doing it's just really is and i'm just so excited to share not only my experience but the the experience of, of each one of the people who are on the call and who are able to share you know what they have to share in this time period that we have so um, hopefully that can help you learn how to love properly and not only learn how to love properly hi shanti not only to learn how to love properly but to love uh, to get the benefit of it to get the benefit of it So we want to get started. Uh, Shanti's, are you there? Looks like you're frozen. Are you frozen? Um, I'm having some challenges with my volume. Oh, okay. Uh, one second, sorry. All right. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the PowerPoint and get started. I'm going to go ahead and do that. While you work that out. Okay, so we're sharing uh, winning battles with love so this is lace love applied can endure and uh this is a video club where we discuss topics that are connected with and are uh, intimately involved in love and so we are excited about that we're excited about that and learning how to really love and what love is and getting the benefit of it is really uh, something to look forward to and something to make things happen uh, in our lives that's different than what we're accustomed to. So we started out by saying that uh, when we talked with uh, several of those on last week about has anyone taught you how to love, it's given you a definition and everyone said no, but there is a definition and we went over that secular definition we also went over the biblical, um, we talked about the biblical, but we didn't go over it last week, but we went over the secular one. So you're gonna go back to the secular one in a minute. But then we said the biblical one is a choice. You don't you don't fall in love, you don't uh, do anything, hi Jackie. You don't fall in love, you don't do uh, anything in, with the secular definition of love. So as I said last week, when we talked to those that were on with us last week, we asked them, I asked them and we all agreed, including me, that nobody gave a definition of love. Nobody explained what love was. And then we uh, talked about the unconditional love that the Bible talks about, um, the biblical definition, um, and there are four of them. And now notice when we go to the definition of love in the secular world, there's only one definition. But in the Greek, there's four definitions for love, unconditional, brotherly love, spousal love, and family love. Now, the unconditional love is the one we're talking about now. This is the one we're talking about in this series. And this series is, talks about what love does. We don't spend a lot of time talking about what love is, but we spend some time talking about the characteristics of love. Uh, and that's part of the foundation, which is what we're doing now. Uh, and we're, as we go through this, we're going to be looking at what love does. What is the benefit of it? 
What is the blessing of it? Why should we do it and make it apply to everything we do? How do we make it apply to everything we do? That's what we're going to discuss tonight. We're going to look at how to uh, make it apply to everything that we do. So it's, it's really uh, uh, exciting to talk about that on tonight. So we're going to jump over, jump back to where we stopped off last week, which was at the definition, the secular definition of love. Uh, and this is the secular definition that we gave last week. Uh, but I added some things to it this week uh, uh, so that we could really understand what it is. And Shantice, if you've got your sound correct, if you read it, if not, just give me a, a thumbs up and I'll read it. Can people win battles with secular love, affection? Secular meaning for from dictionary.com, a proudfully tender, passionate affection for one another, brotherly. A feeling of warm personal attachment or deep affection as for a parent, child or friend, family sexual passion or desire, spousal, verb used with object, loved, loving, to have love or affection for all her students, love her, to have a proudly tender, a, a passionate affection for another person, verb used without object, Loved, loving, to have love or affection for another person. Be in love. Okay, now, now what I want you to take from this side right here is that the brotherly love, the family love, and the spousal love are all in the biblical definition of love. And it is four different ones. Those three are mentioned. But the, um, the one for unconditional is not mentioned here. Now, I want you to notice how many times, five times the word affection comes up. The affection is from one of our senses, it's emotions. It doesn't do anything. It's just like having a feeling. It's like having a feeling for something. So that is the secular definition for love. So it doesn't do anything. So therefore, it, we don't know what to do to express love to someone. And what we normally do what we normally do when we want to express love to someone, you know, uh, because it has no action. Affection is a feeling. It's something you feel. It's something within you that you feel. It has no action. What we normally do, we give gifts. We give surprise parties. Uh, we, we, do, we cook them a meal, give them breakfast in bed. That is the action that we take because we have not understood what love really is. So we created an action to go along with the secular definition because we have not embraced and understood the biblical definition where there is plenty of action to express that you love someone. And believe me, when you follow the biblical um, actions, people know that you love them. They know that you're genuine. They know that you're not faking. But right, this, this definition right here, you can fool somebody with it. You can pretend and they will never know because there's no action to it. You know, there's no action to it. So um, we create our actions and we can create our actions uh, by whatever we want to do to show somebody that we love them. And so they, they'll say, well, you know, you don't act like you love me. Well, what do they mean by you don't act like you love me? Did you not give them something? Did you not do something special for them? What, what did they mean by you don't act like you love me? Because there's no action to the definition of love that we have understood. So we, what we're going to do now is we're going to look at a character. And uh, before we finish this, we're going to look at two characters. But the first one is the one we're going to start with tonight. And what we're going to look at is the definition in 1 Corinthians 13 of the unconditional love, because that's what we're talking about. And we're going to highlight those items that we're going to, and I'm going to ask you to help me find out if this person really did this in the Bible and what which one it was, what, what indicates that they did it. 
Okay, so let's go to this first one, Shantis. We, uh, this is the first half of First Corinthians 13, the unconditional love that we're talking about. So could you read those, please? The characteristics of love are best defined in 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. These are the characteristics that people use to win battles with love. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8, amplify. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never envies nor boils over with jealousy. It is, both, it is not boastful and vainglorious. Love does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. Love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. Love takes no account of the evil done to it. Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Okay, so pay attention to the highlighted ones because we're going to come back to those. All right, let's go to this, finish it with this one. The characteristics that people use went to win battles with love. 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 8. Love does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. Love hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. Love endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will be, I'm sorry, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be des uh, and be superseded by truth. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna come back to those and uh, we're gonna discuss whether we can identify what um, and we're gonna be talking about Daniel, what Daniel did for each one of those highlighted ones, and we can identify what he did so that we can we can. Uh, apply that to our life on today you know and so we're talking about Daniel because this is one uh one of the two people uh that we're going to talk about this is a businessman so we talk about love in business uh and love in government and love in other places of our life love is everywhere and everybody should everybody should be using it in every area of their life but for business, a lot of times people say, well, this is a business, so we have different rules. But when it comes to love, there are no different rules. There's still a way to operate in love, in business, and still do be a good steward in your business and follow good business principle. So Daniel was one of the ones that did that. And so we're going to look at what he did, how he loved in every area of his life, what that love was and the benefit of it. Now, I doubt if we're going to get to the benefit of it tonight, but let, but we're going to go through the story tonight and identify what he did. Uh, so I'm going to ask you to help me identify what he did based on 1 Corinthians 13. So we're going to come back to that. Okay, uh, Shanti, if you can read this slide. Daniel winning battles with love. This is a story that most Bible readers know. Daniel was a businessman, government administrator, and a prophet of God. So this is extremely important for those of you who work in corporate America. Own your own business. 
or work in a business environment with coworkers that may or may not like you. Daniel's coworkers were jealous of his position and the honor that he received from the king. Because of that honor, they set a trap for him to de and desired that he be killed. The account of this is found in Daniel 6, verses 3 through 4. Okay, so we're looking at um, what's going to happen to Daniel here. We saw that uh, we're, we, I guess we, there, there was a time we didn't have to worry about people killing us because they didn't like us. But during this day and time, I guess we do because people are doing it uh, because they don't like what you said or what you did. But we're, we're, we're even on the workplace, some people a couple of weeks ago went back into a bank and kill some coworkers, you know? So we wanna, we wanna, um, we wanna see here what Daniel is doing. And I'm just gonna ask this question. Uh, if you knew that someone was jealous of you and was planning to harm you and, 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 uh, and you could visibly see that or understand that from what they were doing, what would you do? What would you tell people to do if they ask you what to do when somebody is planning something like this against you because they're jealous. Anybody anybody have any idea what they would do? What would you do? Has anybody been has anybody been mistreated? Has anybody been Yeah. yeah. Has anybody yeah. been at work? So if you've been mistreated at work, what did what would you tell somebody to do? What did you do? Who said yes? I said yes. It's me, Shanti. Okay. What what did you do at work when, when you got mistreated? Back then, I didn't do anything. Um, I just tried to continue to maintain my job and work the best that I could. But um, I didn't retaliate. Okay. Uh, all right, so anybody else? Yes, I, I was. Okay, what did you do? I didn't do anything, I just maintained as uh, Allow the person way and you know make sure that I you know didn't retaliate in any way because on, on our job the policy was everybody get sent home with a pink slip so I, I needed my job so I just deal with them and they would sit back and say stuff I didn't do anything okay all right so that's 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 your action you didn't do anything anybody else care to share uh, uh yes um doing a um well i have been well i feel like um mis mis mistreated and um you know people have told lies on me at were in, in one particular case and, and i was called in by the manager and i was going to be reprimanded for it and at first i started to you know think about defend myself and um I just, you know, told the manager that um, it will finally come to to the the light. What is what is really going on? And you will find out for yourself what is really going on. And I just left it like that. But the manager did finally find out what was really the uh, truth. And she asked me why I did did not tell her. And I told her that I thought that it would be best since she was the manager that she would find that on her own. Okay. Okay, so let's see what Daniel did, all right? Let's see what's happening to Daniel. Okay, go ahead and read this one, Shantis. Daniel knew that they did not like him, but he said not a word against them. He knew that they were talking about him. Still, he said nothing. His coworkers looked for something 
to accuse him of, but they found nothing. Then they decided to use his love for God to trap him. The account of this is found in Daniel 5 verses 5, I'm sorry, Daniel 6 verses 5 through 8. Then said these men, we shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said thus unto him, King Darius, live forever. All the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the council, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any God or man for 30 days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Okay, so there is, they have, now I want to make this really clear. Daniel is right there with them and he see what they're doing and they know that he see what they're doing and he says not a word. Okay, so for those of you who didn't say a word, just keep that in mind because we're going to get back to 1 Corinthians 13 and see where you were on that. Because, you know, this this uh, this uh, particular side is, um, is talking about a person just not coming up off of their integrity. Uh, they're, they're going to be honest. They're going to be truthful. They're going to obey God. Uh, and um, so, you know, when, when and they're not going to compromise no matter what happens. So those of you who were dealing with this, it sounds like you didn't compromise. So you you did have a situation there, but you didn't compromise. And um, Daniel was right there with him. He saw that, just like you guys obviously saw what happened to you. And I got stories too, but you know, I got lots of stories of things that happened. And, and this is how I learned. I learned, and uh, by First Corinthians thirteen, that's how I learned. And one of the things that I can share before we go to the next slide is that the people who were um, just making my life miserable, they they would call me in to counsel them. They didn't know that. I was in ministry or anything like that. They would just call me and start telling me about their families. The same people who were holding me up. They call me in and they talk about their families. And, and, and I would encourage them. And, you know, they were saying all these kind of great things about my marriage because they didn't know it because of what, what was going on in my marriage because I didn't tell them. You know, I didn't tell them. So it's, it's, it's really a, um, an amazing thing. When you obey this uh, this love wall and everything you do, the results is just phenomenal. And I was able to counsel them. And I let me tell you, I didn't know anything about counseling when they were calling me and they're talking to me about their families. I didn't know anything about that. I just started saying the word of God because that's all I knew. You know, I would I would say that, and and they would receive that, and I would go on about my business. You know, and I didn't know that the Holy Spirit was saying anything to me to say to them because I was just still at that particular time. I just didn't know it. I was just too big of a baby. So I can't say that the Holy Spirit didn't say anything to them. And I can't say that he did, but I can say that I did tell them the word of God. I did give that to them. And um, when they asked me, you know, when they asked me, they, they came up with all kinds of excuses why I couldn't do this and I couldn't have that. But they expected me to be excellent in all I do. They just didn't want to honor and pay me for that. So um, let's go on to the next slide now. Uh, can you read this one, Sean? They knew that Daniel was accustomed to praying three times a day 
and they knew that Daniel would not compromise his relationship with God. They knew that Daniel was not going to wait 30 days or any day to pray to God. Daniel did not go to the king or complain about the trap that they that they had set for him because he knew that he was not going to give up his prayer time and he decided to trust God as their plot unfolded as reported in Daniel. Okay, it's recorded. Go ahead. Here's the rest of it. Oh, uh, in Daniel 6, verses 8 through 10. Now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writ assign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the law of the Medes and the Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks therefore uh, before God, his God as he did um, as he did a far uh, what is that a four time a four yeah. time before before time a four time it's a four time a four time yeah that's that's the what it is in the scripture um, isn't that interesting so what did Daniel do what did Daniel do in the midst of all that trouble? He kept on doing what he always did, regardless of what was going on around him. He kept his uh -huh. relationship with God. Okay, and when he prayed, what did he do? It says right there, you just read it, Shanti. He um, prayed before God and gave thanks. Gave yeah, thanks. He gave thanks. Now, when we're in trouble like that and people are doing stuff like that in business, do we give thanks? Thank God for having a job. Thank God for taking care of us. Thank God for being in position to do whatever he wanted us to do. Do we give thanks? This is one of the things that he did. He was giving thanks to God in the midst of the situation well, he knew they were trying to throw him in the lion's den. Now, Daniel did not indicate that he thought he wouldn't be eaten up by the lions. He was just going to trust God. If they eat me up, they eat me up, I guess. But the Bible doesn't say what actually, you know, how he felt about it. But it, it does indicate that he did not express any emotion, you know, I can imagine that he wasn't praying any get him prayers either against those that were doing what they were doing. This is the Old Testament. So it is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth in the Old Testament. Uh, it's not that way in, in our dispensation, but in, in theirs it was. And there was nothing Daniel could do because the Lord is the one that exiled them into Babylon. He was the one that sent them there because of their disobedience and he was the one that told them that they were going to have to stay there for 70 years. And he was uh, he was pleased for those who went and did not complain. And Daniel was one of those who went and did not complain. Okay, so let's go to the next one. What is this one saying, Sean? In the midst of knowing all that he knew about what was happening to him, he continued to love them. In fact, everything that Daniel did toward them was in love. He knew what they were doing was meant to destroy him, but he still did not say a word. His co-workers followed him home to spy on him so that they could report that to the king and get Daniel thrown into the den of lions. And... Yeah. Let me go to the end one. And, okay. It's a little small, but can you read it? Um, yes. In Daniel 6, verses 11 through 15, 
Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making 12 and, and making them, they praying and making. Then they came. Yeah, praying and then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Has thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a, a petition of any God or man within 30 days save of thee, O king shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, the thing is true according to the law of the Medes. Then answered they and said before the king that Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with himself and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him. And he labored till the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree not nor statue which the king established may be changed. All right, so they wouldn't even let the king let them off. They had made up their minds that what they were going to do was going to work and it was going to destroy Daniel. And so then uh, we're going to read this next slide and then we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 13 before we finish the last, uh, the last two. Uh, we're going to go back to 1 Corinthians 13 and see if we can see what Daniel did. Okay, read this one, Sean. Daniel was loved by the king because he was a good steward and excellent in spirit, and the king did not want to put him in the den of lions. He even blamed himself for signing that decree. He tried to save Daniel, but his own law cannot be changed. What he did not realize is that the love of God cannot be changed. Daniel exemplified love towards everyone involved in this matter he did not get angry with the king whom he had served faithfully he did not complain that this was a poor reward for his faithful service nor did he try to defend himself from the trap of his co-workers okay so um some of us said that we did nothing when we uh when we uh um got confronted with people that were trying to hurt us on the job. Well, I can't confess that. You know, when I got home, I called my brother up in Chicago and I complained about them as much as I could, almost four hours worth of complaints. I complained and I complained and I complained. And, you know, I can't tell you how much I complained and was talking about how wrong it was and how terrible it was. And, and, you know, I didn't get any honor, any respect, and they were trying to do this, and they were trying to do that. And if nobody else did that, I certainly did, you know. And so I know that I know better now, but back then I didn't. So anybody else who would listen to me, you know, I would call them. But the reason I called my brother, because he would agree with me. Sometimes some folks would try to comfort me and not agree with me, but my brother, he would always agree with me about it about it. So I called him. I called up Lee in Chicago and we just and he just listened to me fuss, 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 complain, complain, complain. And I kept doing it. I kept doing it. So now what we're gonna do now is um, go back to First Corinthians 13 and see what Daniel did so that we'll know how to apply it in our lives. Now, according to this one, this principle, these three principles here, read these three principles again, Ashan, the, the ones that are highlighted. Love, God's love in us 
does not insist on its own right or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. Love is not touchy or fretful or resentful. Love takes no account of the evil done to it. Love pays no attention to a suffered wrong. Okay, so can anybody tell me what Daniel did that would indicate that he did one or all of these three? What did Daniel do? Nobody he wasn't angry. He actually did um, all three of them. Okay, and 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 say what he did. What was his action? Um, he just continued doing what he did, as far as you know, um, you know, praying and you know, worshiping and facing the window, and he didn't hide, um, and he did not seek revenge. And and he did not seek justification from man. He just went on. Okay. So is that an indication of how we should handle that? Yes, yes it's hard, but yes. <laughs> yes. It's hard, yes. Okay. All right, let's look at these the rest of these. Read those, Sean. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of everyone, every person. Love hopes are fadeless under all circumstances. Love endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. As for prophecy, the gift of interpreting the divine will and purpose, it will be fulfilled and pass away. As for tongues, they will be destroyed and cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. It will lose its value and be superseded by truth. Okay, so can anybody see what... Uh or hear what or feel what Daniel did, what action did he take of, of these points of love right here? He continued in doing what he always did in prayer and giving thanksgiving to God in serving the king without animosity, resentment or anything against him. Um, nor did he complain to the king about what he knew they were doing. He still, in his heart, thought the best of these people, even though they were displaying these acts of evil against him. Okay, that's good. Anybody else have some insight on what he did different from that in addition to that? He mostly displayed love, the God kind of love toward everyone, even toward the king. Okay, so we, we, we see how his personal life and his business life were intertwined. We see how they were intertwined. And... Um, I am. Uh, I think that's a uh, somebody calling me back late at night. Um, never get those calls, so I'll call them back later. <laughs> so um, we see where he was doing everything, everything he was doing, he was doing it in love. You know, um, he loved the Lord, so he didn't give up his prayer. And he thanked the Lord for whatever it was going on in his life. He thanked the Lord. And I don't know if all of you that are on here now remember when we had the lesson where we would thank God in the midst of something really bad happening to us, where we, where we felt that we were being dishonored, disrespected, 
and we, we were being exposed to hurt and pain that we didn't want to be bothered with. And we, we talked about the fact that that may have been our making, that we were supposed to get through that, not complain about it, and go through that with the love of God and the help of God and by faith, believe that it was working out for our good because if the Bible say that all things work for our good, for those that love the Lord that are called, it means all things, even the bad things, even the sad things, even the things that we don't like, uh, it's working out for our good. Daniel took that position, but you can't take a position like that without love. You can't take a position like that without love. You know, love and faith are partners. We're going to talk about that later on later on in, in the weeks when we get to near the end here about the partners of love and how that works out together. But he could not have done that if he had not learned to love them, you know, the way he learned to love them. And if he had not, you know, we, we learn obedience by the things we suffer, but we choose to love. It's a choice. We, decide, we can decide to do it or we can decide not to do it. But we learn obedience, you know, by the, by the things we suffer. We, we learn not to put our hands on a hot iron or we're going to get burned, you know. We, we learn some things and we learn how not to do some things. But this is something that we have to choose. So Daniel chose all these things. and it, it, This was in business. Now, this is not his stewardship. He didn't compromise his stewardship and he didn't compromise business principles. But he loved the people in the midst of them doing wrong and acting wrong, you know, and, and trying to get rid of him for nothing more than just being jealous. Because I doubt very seriously if they weren't being paid for what they were doing, but he had the favor of the king. He had the eye of the king. So we, uh, we understand now that, uh, does anybody else have any comments on this before we move on? Because we have to, does everybody understand how to do this in your own life? Is it is it is it understandable? Yes. Understand how to do this today in business. You don't do it just in business. One of the things that we talked about in everything we do, we do in love. But I didn't want to exclude business, so this is why I take some time to do that because I think that. And when it comes to family and church, I think we get taught a lot about how to love one another. But business, we don't. So I said uh, we, we would focus on this instead of um, the other two um, so that we can really understand how to do everything in love. Okay, so uh, Inez, Yes. Um, how about giving us two or three words about what we need to do to love people if we're in business with people and they're and they're against us and they become our enemies? What what do we do? Well, the first thing we can do we can um, stay in prayer and we can have faith that it was, that they will see how I don't know how they're behaving. Stick to what we plan to do, and if it's the right thing, then do that, and not let them uh, their words and their behaviors and things uh, run us away, like make us leave or give up what we uh, whatever the project is, that kind of thing. Now, if we're in business with someone, sometimes um, they can show so much hate and dis disparaging things that it'll make us give up. And for me, I think three things we could do is seek. Seek Jesus' advice, pray and seek his word. Let him guide us in how to how to stand it, how to deal with it, how to live with it, and how to go through uh, so we can come out on the other side blessed and assuring that Jesus is, you know, who we should listen to. And not that person that's cutting up and saying a lot of things. That's, I don't know if I gave three or not, but just sticking with it, prayer, Seeking God's help, all those things, and being quiet about it, not discussing it all over the place because things get back and 
when you discuss things, not discussing it, but when you discuss and say stuff, people, it fears a fire that's already lit and burning, just make it get bigger and bigger. So being quiet, seeking the Lord, thanking God for the, to giving us the patience to understand and to see it through. Okay, well, the reason, the reason I asked you because I know that you know that. I know uh, how your late husband was treated and yeah. uh, I know how he was treated. And I remember whenever I would come to town, no matter what people were doing, you all would take me out to dinner and, and, and it was just such a pleasant thing. And I was just wondering, you know, how could he be so pleasant based on all this <laughs> stuff he was going through? <laughs> But he was, and um, and I really do appreciate you all, um, you know, taking me out and showing me a good time while I was in Los Angeles, uh, in spite of what was going on with you. You did that, so thank you for that. But I thought I knew you would know because I'm sure that you know you dealt with some of the things that he had uh, he had a, a challenge with the people treating him the way they did. You know? Yes those particular people. Okay, so let's get back to where we're where we're going. Uh and uh and just try to come to the close of this. Okay. Uh and this is where we are. Okay. Can you read this, Sharon? Yes. He did not get angry with God or ask to be free from the situation. He did not complain about his co-workers to the king. He did not plan retribution or did not do what would benefit them in his work, what would benefit him in his work ethic. He loved the co-workers and trusted God. That is one of the reasons that we struggle so with anger and offense when people do things to us. We trust people instead of loving them. God never said trust them. He said to love them and trust him. Okay. That's the lesson to learn tonight. We can't do this if we don't love and we don't trust. So trust and love are partners too. If we don't trust God to take care of us in the midst of these folks trying to kill us, then we won't be able to win this battle. We won't be able to win. We're gonna, we're gonna find out next week how, how Daniel won in all of these areas in his life, but we won't be able to win if we don't trust God because we'll do something. To, We'll do something, uh, and, and normally these are the things we do. We flee from the situation. We hide from the situation. We pretend like it's not there. We put on a face mask, or we just kick the person under the bus or separate from them and, and, and uh, just don't want to be bothered with them again and just write them off. Those are the normal things we do when people hurt us like that. Those are the things you do. Well, I'm just not going to be bothered with them anymore. You know, well, we, we, we're not going out to lunch anymore. That's, a, that's the last lunch date we're going to have. You want to eat lunch, you eat by yourself from now on. You know, <laughs> whatever, whatever. Uh, and that was because we're trusting them. We're trusting them. And let me, let me tell you what I did. I went year after year after year trusting them by trying to do what they said would make things better for me the next year. They would tell me why they didn't want to give me as much of an increase and as much of a reward because I didn't do this. And then I would go out and do what they said, but the next year they would come up with something else I did not do and never yeah. acknowledge the fact that I did what they said was wrong before. So I finally found out that you can't, fix what's not broken. I wasn't broken. There was just no way I was going to fix that. So what I did was I started trusting God and started trusting them. And when I started trusting God, the whole, everything changed. Everything changed. I remember 
my boss used to go to them and tell them what excellent work and what outstanding work I was doing. And they would tell him something about how they couldn't do it, do it for this reason or that reason or the other reason. And they would not let him uh, give me the, the reward. But I kept doing it, not because of 1 Corinthians 13, but because I kept believing them that next year it'd be different. Next year it'd be different. It wasn't. It didn't change until I started trusting God. I said, okay, you just do what you want to do. I'm going to go ahead. And once, once I started trusting God, that, that's when they start calling me in for counseling and all the other stuff, you know. And I, I was just free. You know, when you trust God, whether it's in business or at home or at church or anywhere else, at school, in your life, when you trust God instead of people and love the people, you know, and I'm not talking about the trust that has to do with your understanding what people can and will or would not do. That's that's not the trust I'm talking about. I'm talking about treating them as if they can do something for you that they cannot. Only God can do these things. So when you mm -hmm. trust him, you don't have to worry about trusting them, thinking that you're going to get it because they said, you know. Anybody can change what they said, but nobody can change what God said. Anybody can change what somebody else said, mm -hmm. but nobody can change what God said. So that's what we want to get from this tonight. Loving in every area of our life, but to, but to, but to win, we have to love and trust God. Love God and trust God. That's what Daniel did. That's one of the things that he did. He loved God and he trusted God before he dealt with the people. Before he dealt with the people. So God never said to trust them. He said to love them and trust him. Make a note of that. So you say, well, I do trust God. No, we don't. We have all kinds of reasons why we don't trust God because somebody hurt us when we were a child, because somebody abused us, because somebody misused us. If we trusted God, we would obey him instantly and show him that we love him by our instant obedience when he tells us to do something. You know, if we trusted God, we wouldn't be arguing with him about, about doing it or not doing it. You know, so that's one of the things that we have to work on. Work on, you know. And there's a there's a lot of good reasons why we don't trust God, and all of them are, are connected with sin. You know, all of those good reasons are connected with sin. So the Lord wants us to trust Him. Uh, give Him a chance to prove Himself to us, like Daniel did. So Daniel said, "If I go in the lion's den." I'm going, God, but I'm going with you. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm coming out alive, but I'm going in there with you because I trust you. They get ready to put me in there. They don't have to throw me in. They can just open the door and I'll walk in because I trust you. Okay, let's move on to the next one. We don't want to be late here on tonight. Go ahead, um, Sean, read this one. If Daniel had trusted the people instead of loving them, he would not have positioned himself to win. Since his trust was in God and not in the people, it was easier for him to not get angry with them or offended by their attack. They all distrusted and dishonored Daniel, but he still loved them. It appears that his love for his co-workers was his ticket to the lion's den. But this is not the end of the story. Daniel finds himself on his way to the den of lions in Daniel 6, verse 16 through 17. Remember, Daniel was right there with them while they were planning his demise. Okay, go ahead with this one. 
Even though the scripture did not say that Daniel loved his co-workers, he did indeed show those characteristics of love. We know from 1 Corinthians 13 what love really looks like. Daniel yeah. did those things. Love is not being jealous or envious. Daniel was neither, but his co-workers were. Daniel endured long with them. He was at the meeting where they set him up to be put into the lion's den. Daniel knew that this was chosen over all of them to lead them. He was chosen over all of them to lead them. He was not inflated with pride. He did not insist on his rights. He was not fretful or resentful. He paid no attention to the wrong that he suffered at their hands. Okay, so this is the one thing that we didn't talk about. He was the leader. Daniel was over all of these people. He was to lead them by example. He was to lead them and show them uh, and demonstrate to them what leadership looked like, what love looked like, what God looked like, uh, the God that he served. He was the leader. He was the leader and they were plotting against their boss. They were plotting against him. He was leading them. Uh, and remember the king tried to save him, but they wanted to get rid of him. Now, us being a leader, how do we handle people that's under us that's trying to do us in? How do we have people, you know, that have personalities that leaders, how do we handle people, whether they're in the family, whether they're in the church, whether they're in the school, whether they're in business, how do we handle leaders that want to take over? You know, and people that are, are, are leaders, they just want to take over. People who have the gift of leadership, they want to take over everything because it's their gift and they haven't learned how to use it properly or they haven't learned how to discipline themselves so that they can keep it within the boundaries where it needs to be uh, because they're not in charge of everybody and everything. But when they come into a situation, they just take over. They just take over, start telling people what to do, start telling the leader what to do. How, how do we handle those people? Daniel showed us how to handle those people. Handle the people that are under you, that are causing you all of this trouble. Um, what do you do? You know, so based on this, based on this, if you're leading somebody, even if you're leading yourself in the family, if you're leading somebody, somebody, somebody tell me, what, what, what do you do when you have uh, people under you that you're leading that's acting ugly like this? What do you do? Anybody? We, when you try to tell them what's right, if I'm gonna say if they will listen, but you use patience. You try, mm -hmm. you try to understand them where they're coming from, what's going on with them, and you and you, you ask God for directions on how to speak to them. What need to be said to to I would say regulate their minds or, or get them to doing better and listening to the Lord instead of what they are thinking about. Some people are deep rooted in those kind of things and always looking for a way to cause harm or disturbance or discard or create chaos in other people. And so we do have people like that in our families and we have to pray for them. We have to do our best to talk to them, but we have to ask the Lord how to go about speaking to them and, see it, and uh, trusting that the Lord will work it out with them. Okay, and, and that's good because we do have people in our family that like to start fights. We do have people in our family that have negative things to say about everybody and everything. You know, mm -hmm. we do have those kind of people in our family, on our job, at church, everywhere else. We have we those do. kind of people. They have issues, but we still have to lead them. We don't get not to lead them 
because uh, of, of way the way they are. And we have to lead them by example. You know, there are other leadership things that we have, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about uh, leading them into understanding how to love and what it looks like. And everybody knows when they've been loved. I don't care who they are. Everybody wants, no matter how mean they are, they want to be loved. They want to be loved. So you're leading people, then we want them to see God's love in us instead of seeing the world's love in us because the world's love, all it is is affection. It has no action and therefore you can't win with it and you get no results from it. Okay, so I know since you were talking, we're gonna start with you. Um, what did you learn tonight that help you uh, that will help you be able to learn to love in everything you do? By not letting what people say change me from my belief and faith and trust in God. And what I learned really that I hadn't thought about was when you was talking about trust. Trust the Lord, not in people. But did remind me, Rev, you say all the time, uh, do not trust in man, put your trust in man who dresses in his nostrils because he'll say something to you, looking at you and turn his back and it's a whole different story. So to trust, in, to trust the Lord instead of the man and to show kindness, no matter what's going on, to have patience and understanding where people are, who they are, you know, if you know something about them, you might know what's going on with them, but not to discuss that with them or even bring it up, but just to try to love them, show love and affection. And okay, understand. Okay. <laughs> Patience. Patience. All <laughs> so, right. Okay, Shantis, did you learn anything that will help you love uh, and everything you do? Yes. I most certainly did. Um, mm -hmm. I was able to uh, be reminded mm -hmm. of areas where I was not operating in um, love, both in the workplace and at home. So it just gave me a reminder of allowing love to flow. And it also showed me that in that love flows the, uh, flows the fruit of the spirit. And um, if you are operating in the fruit of the spirit, you are operating in love. Yes. And um, that is, that was just really speaking loudly to me. And then it, it showed me some areas that, you know, I need to smooth out. <laughs> okay. How about you, Jackie? Um. I was just, you know, uh, listening and reading too, and uh, just just realizing the um, the huge difference in, uh, you know, godly love is the way God wants us to love one another, and the way uh, the worldly love is, and um, you know, I just, you know, different situations. I was really thinking it over, and I said, "Ooh, wow." I could have really done that. <laughs> really, it would have been better if I had used the uh, kind of love that you know Daniel had for his um, you know fellow fellow man, and that I just need to you know just you know study God's word, pray, and you know ask God to 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 help me to develop that type of of love in in life situations. Okay. How about you, Julia? Are you able to speak or are you driving? Are you driving, Julia? Yeah. I can't hear you. Okay. I don't know what to do here. Um... I hear you now. <laughs> oh, okay. I said I'm driving, but I just parked. Um, I've just been listening and driving, and okay. um, there are few areas that need to be worked on, need to be tweaked, but I can't be specific right now because I was focusing more on the road. Okay, that's fine. 
I know that you use the driving sometimes when you're on. So, okay. So next week, uh, what we're going to talk about is the benefit of what Daniel received. We're going to talk about what love does because he did what he did. He exhibited those actions and those characteristics. The benefit of what he does. We're going to talk about that next week. And and in every area of his life, we're going to talk about what happened, what God did when we trust God. So that's the key. Trust God no matter how bad it looks. Trust God no matter how bad it looks. Then we got one more. Evelyn, how about you? Did you learn anything that could help you love in all situations? Yes, to never be resentful and to trust and love, to trust God and love him. So that way I can be an example of God. Yes. And that's how people know who God is and how he is and his characteristics and his heart by how they see us acting. And that's how the people know. Okay. So that is it for tonight. Next week, we're going to go over. How to see. Yes. I, I just wanted to add to that by saying um, that um, it was a demonstration of the love of God versus the worldly love, like um, Miss Jacqueline was saying, and it showed that God's love has yeah. no conditions, has no conditions at all, but that our, the worldly love has conditions. Yeah, it does. It is true. And, you know, I just want to remind everybody, I did ask you last week, if anybody taught you what love was or defined it, they didn't even, they didn't even give us the dictionary definition. <laughs> so we just had to throw it out there on our own <laughs> with what we thought it was. You know, uh, when, when we, there's only one word for it. So when it was family love, we had to decide, okay, this, this love I'm talking about is family love. And when it's spousal love, sexual love, we had to say, okay, this, this love is, but it's so different. It's so different. And there's nowhere in the English language where you can differentiate it. So it, it probably causes a lot of confusion because there are some things that are done in spousal love that should not be done with other people, <laughs> you know? So, you know, <laughs> We, we just don't get it because we haven't been trained and haven't been taught. So I really do appreciate God. Uh, I wish I had, I, I'm like, I did. I wish I had known this uh, 50 years ago, but better late than never. <laughs> better late than never, right? Better late than never. Okay, let me pray and close this out on tonight. Anybody have anything else to say? Before we close out, Inez, you done for tonight? Yes. Okay. Our Father and our God, we come to you in the name of Jesus, just thanking you for teaching us how you love and what love is and the way to love and how to love each other. And we thank you, God, for showing us the benefit that you have put in your word, the benefit that you have put in the spirit, the benefits that you have put there so that we can be protected from things because we're following your word and following your direction and love it because love is you. You are love. There's no way to separate you from love because that's who you are. So we thank you, Lord, for teaching us. We thank you, Lord, for being with us. And we ask you to bless everything we put our hands to, to help us love more, to help us understand more, to help us partner with these different things that you have given us in your word that love works so well with so that we can implement love in every area of our life as you desire that we do. And we thank you for it. And we believe it done because we know that you answer prayer at the point of prayer. And we are expecting God to be an example for anybody to see us to know what love is and to know who you are. And we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. That's it for tonight. Next week we're going to jump into seeing what the benefit is. Well, that's going to be exciting. What did Daniel get for all of that trouble he went through by loving people like that? Okay? All okay. right. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Enjoy. Be blessed. Good night. Inez. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Julia, Evelyn. Good night. Jackie and Shanti. Good night. Good night. Good night.